Now we're going to look at reflecting graphs, and we're going to look at a reflection in the x-axis and reflection in the y-axis. So if we start looking at first the x-axis, what's going to cause a reflection? Well, once again, if you are given your function f of x, and then h of x, if we're going to reflect this in the x-axis, then uh, think about this for a second. If we have a reflection, if we start out, let's say that we have a point here in the first quadrant, and we're going to reflect this about the x-axis, then that means that point then is going to now be moved down here. So what has changed? Well, for example, if this point here happens to be over 1, up 2, then now has the point down here changed? We are now still over 1, but we're now going, instead of up 2 units, we're going down 2 units. So here, where you have your x and your y, it now becomes x, and then we're taking the negative of our y value. So all we're changing is our y value from positive to negative, or vice versa, from negative to positive, depends on the location of your graph. So keep in mind here, f of x is really your y value. So what we're going to look at is if we're going to reflect this graph in the x-axis, then we need to change the sign of our y value. And we're going to do that by putting a negative in front of the entire function. So if we look at a specific example, we have f of x equals x squared. Again, we'll start looking at the quadratic or parabola. Uh, we know the graph of our parabola is going to be at the origin opening upwards like this and now if we want to look at the reflection then h of x we're going to put a negative in front of the whole function so a negative is going to be in front of x squared and if we do that that's going to cause the graph to open down in other words it's going to be reflected in the x-axis so whereas if we were to pick a point up here, whatever this point may be, x, y, then down here on the reflection, we're going to have the same x value, but the only thing that's going to change is our y value is now going to be negative because we're on the opposite side of the x-axis. And that's how we look at uh, the reflection there with the x-axis. And we could do the same thing if we look at another example. Uh, let's say that I have the function f of x equals, let's look at the square root of x. Well, our square root function, we're still going to have our parent function here starts at the origin. We have half of a parabola. And if we want to look at the reflection, then that means h of x we would put a negative in front of the entire function. And if we do that, you're going to end up with the graph here going below the x-axis. So therefore, it's going to create the reflection in the x-axis. Now, let's look at what's going to cause a reflection in the y-axis. Well, if we think before, if we have a point here in the first quadrant, and again, if we use an example of 1, 2, if we reflect that point with the y-axis, then that point now is going to be over here. And what's going to change? Well, because we're going to the left now, our x value is now negative, but the y value stays the same. So in other words, if we start out with our x and y, then if we reflect this, again, what's going to change? The only thing that's changing is our x values becoming negative. The y value stays the same. So if we look at this in general for the y-axis, if we just look at a general function f of x, then we need to make the inside of this negative because we want to change the sign of our x value so that's going to be on the inside of the function so h of x the new function the reflection would be f of a negative x so it's going to go on the inside if we look at a more specific example 
such as f of x equals the square root of x. Okay, so now we know the square root function. That's going to be this graph that's half of a parabola on its side. And now we want to have the reflection of this graph in the y-axis. So that means we would have h of x. Now the negative is going to go on the inside of the function because we want to change the sign here of our x values. So that's going to cause this reflection here in the y-axis. So here we would have h, and over here would be your function f. So again, the negative here on the inside of the function is going to cause a reflection with the y-axis. Now, there's always a neat one here to look at. Uh, for example, what if we look at our quadratic function, f of x equals x squared? Well, we know the graph of this is going to be our parabola that opens up here at the origin. What does the graph of h of x equals a negative x? squared. Well, that's going to be a reflection in the y-axis. Well, if we do that, then that means this part of the graph here is now going to be reflected to the other side and vice versa. So what's going to happen is you're going to end up with exactly the same graph because all you're doing is switching sides with your points. And to show that, if we were to simplify this of course, when we square the negative, a negative squared is going to be a positive, so negative x squared is really simply x squared. So therefore, in this case, we're going to end up with the exact same graph. So to review quickly here, if you're looking at reflecting a graph in the x-axis, then that means that you're changing your y value. So if you notice here, if you have a point, the only thing that has changed, your x value stays the same, the sign of your y value is changing, so that you move to the other side of the x-axis. And just the opposite is true for reflection in the y-axis. Notice here, you're going about the y-axis, so your y value stays the same. The only thing that's going to change is your x. So if your x is positive, it becomes negative. If your x is negative, it will become positive because you're going to the opposite side of the y-axis. So hopefully now you have a good understanding of how to go about reflecting graphs. And again, you can experiment with using your graphing calculator by changing the signs of different graphs to see how the reflection will occur.